Hello, it's Sunday, which is kind of unusual because usually I don't record on uh, weekends, if I can avoid it. But uh, today is actually a uh, kind of a special day because today I'm working on the last two tracks of the Opium Cartel album. And yesterday I recorded with Martin Ekman and did some drums. And uh, uh, I just wanted to show you um, the drum setup for this track. And this is why uh, when you look at the background it might look a bit weird because I usually, usually film in there, which is, well this doesn't make any sense either, but that is the control room behind that window. And these are like the amps and everything. So uh, I'll back off a bit so you can see the drum kit as it is set up. And it's very very simple. Uh, I'm just using uh, two toms and a snare drum and a bass drum. But um, one thing that is interesting, which I just want to show you, is uh, I'm using a, my old 22-inch bass drum for this track. But then I'm using also, I think the track is called uh, Better Days Ahead. And then I'm using, I'm using the Premier Concert bass drum as a resonator bass drum. So every time I hit the ordinary bass drum, which is mic'd inside, uh, the resonator bass drum will resonate along with that hit giving it almost a, a miniature room, if you want to, or just like a, a, a longer sound, a more sustained sound. Um, I'm not using any like interesting microphones or anything, so uh, and you can probably figure out just from these pictures what is uh, going on. One of the Neumanns and one of the AKG guys pointing down. Uh, and... Um, I'm using just a, a random blend of, of cymbals and and uh, and toms and stuff, just because it's. Um, I thought they sounded good for this track. Let's put it like that. This is my a new floor tom I bought for the Charlie Porter live stuff, which is a like a no name 16 inch thing, and then there's a Gretsch uh, 12 inch uh, old vintagey thingy. And then a, uh, a piccolo snare, you can see like that. And then my old uh, 78 sonar 2218 um, bass drum, and then the concert bass drum over here. If we just walk around, we can see it in its full glory. And there you can see the mic as well. The other bass drum mic is inside it to get like the punchy stuff out of it. And that's about it. I'm, I did this film uh, more for Jacob's sake, so he can actually figure out what is going on and why everything sounds so horrible. Uh, this uh, little horrible rotor thing, which is in the middle of the drum kit, there you go, uh, is uh, heavily compressed with one of those DBX163 over easy compressors. But first it's going through the, um, a spring reverb, and that is compressed, so that everything I hit goes... <laughs> after a while and the fewer hits I do the more it works so when it's a big mess it really doesn't add anything except a bit of spring reverb deploying y stuff but so this is the drum kit yes and the funny thing with these mobile cameras is that we can do weird zoomy things around the drum kit and one of those almost beat up MD 103s and I'll go inside the studio and the control room and then we'll see if Everything is fine in here. Hopefully it is. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. So I'm going to keep on recording and I might rejoin you a bit later today. Okay, bye.